Hey there, welcome back to the final part of this week's episode of Leading Our Own Way. I hope you found inspiration in our guest journey this week. Today, we'll leave you with some key takeaways and actionable insights that you can lean on. Now let's wrap up with some powerful lessons that can help guide you on your own path. Don't forget to tune in for a brand new guest next week on Monday. But for now, enjoy this week's. Please subscribe to the channel if you don't already as well. Have a great weekend. We'll see you soon. I can relate to the journaling side of things because people, my my trauma was workplace bullying. Um, it, it, that really affected me to an extremely deep level. And uh, I, some, I, I've always been a very open book. I've always spoken about it, but you could see people going, here we go again. Or you can see it in their eyes and, you know, mm -hmm. ugh, you know, so people, some people said, why don't you write it down? I was like, no, I'm not doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it was that, that man side of me came out and go, no, that's girly. Ugh. That's terrible to think and say, but I'm just mm. being truthful. I was like, no, I'm not doing that. Writing mm. my feelings down isn't for me. But that's what, and I'm not here to plug it, and I'm not going to get it out or anything, but that's why I wrote my book on, on leadership yeah, yeah. because I wanted to do that human side of leadership, but my story's in it. And mm -hmm. once I wrote it down, man, it was the most powerful thing. And I'm not a writer, by the way, but it was the most powerful thing for me. And it was, mm. uh, it was, it was the best thing I ever did. And I always give that advice out and I always write it down. Just write it down, mm. in, even just on a scrap piece of paper. Just write it down. With, with what was your? So, how did you, Samantha and Jennifer, um, come together as a family? Then, what was the the biggest contribution to you guys sticking together and getting th and, and trying to uh, make those waves, as you said at the beginning, become a bit thinner and far between? Um. Honestly, and not to make light, I mean, I can make light of it now, but not to make light of it, uh, just our stubbornness. We just, we, you know, Jennifer and I were of the mindset, especially when it comes to marriage, if problems happen, we're going to work through them. Mm. Uh, we're not going to necessarily give up because the statistic of a family staying together after, after the loss of a child, there's a ridiculously high divorce rate because of the just wedge it puts in between people. Mm. And we just, we weren't going to allow that to happen. And I mean, a lot of it came with, with the faith that we have. I'm my son passed away on a Friday and Sunday morning, two days later, we were still in the, the second row of seats. Uh, almost at the front of the church waiting on service. And one of the associate pastors comes up to me and literally says, why are you, I can't believe y'all are here. And I looked at him and I said, where else would I be? I mean, if you go in the whole idea of faith and that kind of thing, this is the place I need to be. Absolutely. And I, I mean, I will say this not to get preachy by any stretch of the imagination, but if the whole basis for Christianity is the fact that God's son died, I said, can you not see the relation of that symbolic relation here? Mm. I said, where better to be than a house of worship to uh, a, a system of belief that has the very same example as I've just experienced yeah. kind of thing. And so I don't even think he thought of that. He just looked at me and goes, well, that's a very good analogy. And I yeah. went, I said, I said, where else would I be? He'll, so. he'll, he'll be doing that from now on. If the same scenario occurs, that's yeah. for sure. Um, so what does the, um, what does the future look like for you then, Jason and letters of, uh, Zachary, letters to Zachary, where will you take it? Is there a goal? Is there a direct, is, is there a direction it might go in? Um, ultimately the goal of this was to help anybody that needed it, even if it was just one person, uh, that, that has always been the, the foundation as to why I created it. Now, do I get in now? Do I personally get into some of the hype when it grows bigger and bigger and bigger? I'd be wrong if I said, no, uh, it does excite me when it grows. I'm ha you know, I'm not looking at, at this for notoriety by any stretch of the imagination, but when I do get it, it is nice in a in kind of a simplistic, prideful way in that what I'm doing is growing. It's building. Because the other simplistic view of this is 
I wanted to build this as some sort of legacy for my son. And the more it grows, the bigger that legacy gets Mm -hmm. is more the reason why I kind of have a prideful response to it. Because, you know, I tell people all the time when they say they make positive comments about my, my content, I say, well, you know, I appreciate that it resonates with you. However, this is inspired by my son who passed away. And I always refer back to that because without any of that happening, I I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be talking to you. I wouldn't have Paige. None of this would be happening. And so, um, you know, the direction forward is just to grow bigger and bigger. Um, Like I told you in the pre-meeting that I have representation in 44 of the 50 U.S. states, and I now have representation, I think it's in 26 different countries. And Amazing. I've only been doing this nine months, yeah. uh, which which may seem like a long time to someone that doesn't do this. But, you know, when, when I follow accounts that have 10,000 and 50,000, there's one that has a million and a half followers, that kind of thing. To have that much growth in what I consider a short period of time, it it just mind blowing. If you'd have told me nine months ago, I'd be sitting here talking to someone from the uh, uh, eastern side of Australia. <laughs> you know, I'd, I'd look at you, you've lost your mind. You know, <laughs> so it, it just so there's that, and then uh, the one thing that's in the works that I'm currently doing that's in production is. Uh, I'm working through a publisher where I'm, I'm, I'm creating a grief coloring book. Um, yes, that's amazing. The reason why it's a coloring book is one is because it's a unique idea Two, if you're of my age, which I'm kind of generation X, if you go by the generations, um, hmm. adult coloring books have become popular. And so one, it, it caters to that adult population, especially parents that have lost children And then two, if you, if my daughter were normally functioning per se, it could be an easy way that I could give her something that she's familiar with coloring, something that would kind of ease her mind while she was doing it. And then we could have those bonding moments to where I could talk to her about difficult topic Mm -hmm. topics and simplistic ways to help her understand and get through the grief while she's doing something that's comforting to her is the reason why I'm doing it. And then the last fold is this, the people that have submitted, uh, for pages in the coloring book, it is completely free period. I'm, they are not being charged to submit their entry. So that can be any parent that's lost, uh, lost a child, a parent, a loved one, anything like that. Now the, the other kicker here is those people. Essentially, what they do is they go to my website. There's a community project link. They go to a survey. They fill it all out. In one section of that sur- survey, they list attributes about their loved one, You know their, their name, what they like, maybe a quote, maybe a small paragraph about them. And then the artist will then take all of that information and make one full coloring page in the coloring book that people can color based on the imagery that they have given. So not only does it do that for the people that have submitted it it um it gives an active and interactive memorial for their loved one that is something that they can hold in their hands that they can purchase the other aspect of it is is those people that have podcasts foundations websites books whatever there's a section in that survey that after they've created their whatever they're listing for their attributes for their coloring book page, they can then list what they're working on. So like you, let's say you do it on that the, on the back of your coloring page, you could list this podcast, the website, the YouTube address, and you can promote yourself in this tangible book and it costs you nothing is what it does. And I tell people, I say, where else can you get free? I said, the only cost of you for advertisement is that you'll have to buy the coloring book is what it comes down to. I said, I said, it doesn't cost you to submit. It doesn't cost you to advertise. Now, well, I don't officially know what the cost of the coloring books and today's prices in the country. It could be 20 or $25 mm. just because of inflation and that kind of thing. Yeah. But 
even if it were that, I tell them, I said, even if you do spend $25, where can you advertise for $25? Absolutely. Nowhere. I know. And Wait, so I mean, I'll do it for sure. You know, so, um, cause like I had one podcast, they say, well, why have you decided to do that? I said, because I have had so many people help me to, in one way or another, help me to get this page up and running either by tips, sharing other mm -hmm. podcasts, foundations. I said, it's a way for me to give back to those that help me so much. Absolutely. Now in the, in the long run, will I make something off of it? I said, yeah, if it sells out really well, I could make something off of it. Am I expecting that? No, because mm -hmm. I mean, ultimately I have to pay the publisher first. Yeah. And so whatever makes after that, then I'll yeah. make something, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, that's just the way the world works. So I'm doing that. Um, at some point down the road, I may compile everything and make a book. I still don't know if I have the brain power for that. Uh, You'll I find may, it. Um, I mean, I have a two inch binder sitting at my feet right now that's just full of stuff. So I may not have everything to make a book, but I've got a pretty good start right now. Yeah. Uh, kind of thing. And then small, simple steps to that, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Um, last but not least, I would like to get into the public speaking circuit, but I've I found it hard to get in. I'm kind of hitting a brick wall right now. I don't know if it's just because the topic I'm talking on is is not the most lighthearted topic. Mm. Uh, I, you know, do I have 10,000, 20,000, 50,000 followers? No, it may be the fact that I don't have a ton of followers. It, you, I mean, I don't know what the real factor is, although I'm still pushing forward. At some point, someone will say yes. You could look at, um, you've, you've heard of TED Talks, right? Well, yeah. I've, TED Talks fact, has the I, TEDx. Yeah. In fact, I have applied to that. And even on that website, it says there's such a huge response for TED and TEDx that it may take a while to respond back. Yeah. And, and I said, the only way I would hear a response is if they really wanted to do it. And that was a couple of months ago. I mean, yeah. anything's possible. Of course. But at this point, I've kind of gone, well, I just, I need to move on. I can't sit and wait. Yeah. I, I've got to try other pastures. So, uh, you know, I'm wanting to do that. And, you know, there's, um, in fact, the last thing I did before here was kind of a TV style podcast, like producers, that kind of thing. Okay. And I just did that. That'll air, uh, I believe August 18th on on her website where she's not only on the website but she's in several countries she told me she said my potential reach for this for this tv style show is 30 million people whoa and i said well okay then yeah so <laughs> i mean hopefully that'll gain some attention so i i'm trying several different avenues yeah um honestly to get the word out i'll try just about anything Absolutely. And that's the way to do it is to chip away at those little areas and those little, little areas will hopefully reach to the bigger cracks, mm -hmm. you know, and in the bigger, into the holes mm -hmm. of, you know, the digital world and the algorithms that are, you know, the problems that are, we face with all here as well. Yeah. But I will put all of your show, all your information, all your links into the show notes. If I can help spread the word as much as I possibly can, I, I have you on, I'm in your groups. I have you personally, but I will also share it to the page as well. I sure. don't have the biggest following, but it's constantly growing every day, like, like yours. So hopefully the bigger mine gets the, and the more I share out and I'm happy to do that. And um, if I can, even if I don't contribute or can't contribute, which I'm more than willing to contribute to the coloring book, as you can see, I get a lot of my author's books behind, uh, sorry, not my author's, mm. uh, my guest books behind me. I've got a okay. few more. I can, I'm happy to purchase the book and, and put it here sure. even as well. So, um, and, and it'll be on display all the time, like these books. So uh, I'm happy to do that. If right when now, it, the tentative date for the coloring book is August 16th is the release. However, Perfect. as those in the publishing industry know, issues mm -hmm. do come up and they do get yeah. delayed. But at this point, she she feels like they have more than enough time to do it. Well, stay in touch with that one, Jason, and keep me okay. posted. And and um, I'll uh, do what I need to do to get it over here to Australia as well. Okay. Um, before we wrap it up, then, I've got two more things. Um, if I'm going to ask you what your purpose is. I feel like mm -hmm. I already know it. Mm -hmm. Guests tend to know, I've already explained it within the, in the podcast, but I'm looking for a very simple question before I do go there. If people 
who have listened to this have been through something similar to yourself might not be this is the exact same scenario in terms mm-hmm. of some of the medical conditions your children had more probably the loss of a, of a loved one or a child mm-hmm. um if somebody is listening to this or somebody's got a friend who's listening to this who've lost a loved one mm-hmm. uh, what advice if you could give a piece of advice a, a general one line or a one phrase or what what advice could you give them based on the journey you've you've been on <laughs> Um, I don't know if I could give a simple short answer, but what I will say is grief sucks. Uh, Mm. to put it blunt, it sucks. It's terrible. It's devastating. It's hard. It's soul crushing. It's heart tearing. You name it. Yeah. I would tell those people dealing with it, even though you feel like you're not going to get through it at this point, it's okay. Um, in the beginning, you're, you, you know, some people tell you you need to move on from it, but the reality is you don't move on from it. You move forward from it. And there is a difference. Yeah. You never forget it, but you do move forward from it. If you don't move at all in those first couple of months, six months, maybe in that first year, it's fine. That's normal. There's no wrong way to grieve. But at some point you will start taking little steps and you won't recognize it, but after a long, a long enough time, you may turn around and realize how far you've come from those little steps. Mm-hmm. And uh, the last thing I'll say about it and the analogy I'll say about it is you walk into a dark tunnel and it's pitch black and you cannot see the light on the other side of the tunnel. That's what it's like entering into grief on the day that your loved one dies. But once you start moving, as slow as it may be, you can't tell your direction, you can't tell how fast you're going, you'll start to see the light at the end of the tunnel. And no matter how small, you will keep moving forward to the point in which you move to the other and you see the light. However, in grief, even though you've gotten through that tunnel, you can, you're on a mountaintop, you can see the valley, but you can still see all of the tunnels you still have to go through to get to wherever you're going. Mm. That's not to say that there won't be another darkness in your life and you have a moment. Every one of those uh, tunnels are moments. Mm. Mm. But what mm. you'll notice is, is the farther you go along the track is whereas the tunnels are close together, three miles down the track, you'll see that they'll start getting farther and farther apart. And that's just how the, how grief happens. Yeah. Ah. Great. It's, you know, something that sounds very simple. Um, mm. We all know is extremely hard, especially when you mm. go through something like that. Mm. Um, but it needs to be said and it, and, and it allows people to sit in it, doesn't it? And, 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 mm. and go through the emotions that they need mm-hmm. to, to go mm-hmm. through rather than shutting them out and, 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 holding them down deep somewhere Mm -hmm. thanks jason um just quickly then what what is your purpose in life now then i have always from a from a religious aspect i have always believed that the children that we have had we were given to us for a reason uh especially being as a stay-at-home father i have always felt like me taking care of them and being their guardian if you will has always been my purpose and i still am that to my daughter however with the fact that i have gotten such the response that i have in such a short period of time and the fact that you know you're now my 29th podcast the episode i've done um I believe that my purpose is con- doing this page, reaching out to people, continuing my son's legacy, and you know, just spreading the love in, in just the most simplistic way, if only just to be an open ear. That's it. Well, Jason, that's exactly what you are, and um, you are spreading the the love, and you're certainly keeping um, Zachary's spirit alive and Mm -hmm. that's beautiful to see and i'm gonna i'm gonna watch and be the side of you and share what i need to share Mm -hmm. to help you and your Mm -hmm. family's journey thanks for creating a safe space as well online Mm -hmm. for everybody else to meet you and be a part of your journey thanks for being a part of my journey and joining on leading Mm -hmm. our own way i really appreciate Mm -hmm. your time and i hope you have uh go and have another coffee and settle down for the day (laughs) and spend time with your lovely lovely family but to you and samantha and jennifer thank you uh, Jason, Thank I really you. appreciate your time. Um, I hope you've enjoyed yourself talking to me today. Um, Certainly. 
<laughs> uh, well we're mates forever now uh, jason so uh, you won't be able to get rid of me and uh, people who know me will be going yeah he's right and you can't no. he won't <laughs> um jason thank you again um thank you and uh, to everybody else um i hope you will sit here and listen to jason and his story and i know you'll be all take, be able to take something away with you and, and and to help you with your own life and your own journey your own personal development um, and, and whatever your journey is so i appreciate your time everybody and come back next week for next week's guests have a great week thanks for listening and watching leading our own way so we can stay together forever and share more incredible journeys please subscribe to the channel that way you won't miss next 